Hi, I'm Brett Barra from Brooklyn Craft Company, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you all the basics of Bargello Needlepoint. You'll learn everything you need to know to make our Bargello Needlepoint Planter, which is a kit you can get on our website, brooklyncraftcompany.com. Bargello is really easy to learn and fast to do, so let's get started. Bargello is a vintage style of needlepoint that was really big in the 60s and 70s. You may recognize it from your grandma's house. It's characterized by geometric repeating patterns and bold colors that create really wild and trippy patterns. Traditionally, it was often used for pillows and cushions, but we've been working on designs here at Brooklyn Craft Company for more things that you can make besides just pillows. And in this video, we're gonna learn how to make our Bargello Needlepoint Planter. And what this is, is a needlepoint cuff that fits over a glass vase. And this glass vase is great as a holder for all kinds of things like makeup brushes or pencils on your desk, um, or you can plant a plant in it. And it's really easy to make. You can learn it very easily and you can finish the whole thing in a weekend or less. And it's really fun to do, so let's get started. Let's take a look at everything you'll need to make this project. We are working with plastic canvas, um, which is great for Bargello because it's um, flexible, but it holds its structure, so it's perfect for the cuff for our planter. You can also use traditional needlepoint canvas, which is great for more flexible items like pillows, but for this project, plastic canvas is gonna be perfect. We'll do our stitching with tapestry wool, which is 100% worsted weight wool yarn, but it's sold in these small skeins specifically for Bargello and other needlework because um, it allows you to just get a little bit of each color and it comes in hundreds of colors. So it's really great for Bargello because you can have fun picking out lots of colors and just get a little bit of each. Uh, we'll be using size 18 tapestry needles. Tapestry needles have a large eye and a blunt tip and size 18 is the right size for the tapestry wool and the plastic canvas for this project. We'll need some small sharp scissors. And finally, we'll need a pattern or a chart for what we're gonna be making. Next, let's talk about using the chart and understanding it so that we can get started with our stitching. So this chart and all the materials shown here come in the kit for our Bargello Needlepoint Planter. And as you can see, this chart is formatted on a grid and the grid of the chart corresponds to the grid of the plastic canvas, and it's just a literal one-to-one -one grid. So each square on the chart is exactly one square on your canvas. And the important thing I want to explain about charts is that there's a pattern repeat built into this chart. And right here there's a note that says repeat pattern across to full width as shown in photo, and that references the photo that comes with your pattern. And here I have a Bargello piece that we're gonna be making that's finished. This will get sewn together to form the cuff shape that we're gonna be making, but it begins by being worked as this flat rectangle piece. And so I just wanna talk about how the chart corresponds to the finished pattern. So as you can see in the finished piece, we have three full diamonds plus two partial diamonds on either end. And so if you take a look at the chart, you'll see that it's really just showing you a full diamond, one of these center diamonds, one full diamond for the top, which is the same as the bottom, and then it's showing you how big to make this side piece. And then you would just keep repeating this all the way across, repeat the exact same thing so that you have the three full diamonds. And the reason charts are made that way is because it really would be unnecessary to print the entire chart that shows the full project. It's actually sort of shorthand, it's a little clue when you see that just part of it is colored in in the chart, that's a little clue that tells you everything is gonna be repeated identically. So it actually makes it easier on you because you don't need to read the rest of the chart so carefully. You just realize that you're just gonna keep repeating what you're doing. So the first important thing I wanna make sure you understand here is that we're gonna be um, working a piece that's three full diamonds across plus the two partial diamonds. And the next thing I wanna talk about is understanding how to place your piece on your actual plastic canvas. Now the plastic canvas that comes with the kit is cut to the correct size, but if you were cutting your own canvas for your own pattern, the way you would know how big to make your canvas is to count, actually count the number of squares in your pattern. So you'd count the number of vertical squares and you'd count the number of squares across, including all the necessary repeats. And then you would cut a piece of canvas that was as big as that, plus a border of one to two inches on all four sides, just to give yourself some extra room for any necessary finishing. And then when it's time to actually start stitching, we're gonna start all the way over here on the far left. 
And the way that we figure out where that is on our plastic canvas is that we would determine the middle point of the chart and the middle point of the plastic canvas, and then we would just count over and up to the first stitch, and you would count over and up the same amount of squares on your canvas. And then just remember to scoot over a little bit to give yourself a border on the edge. So we're gonna be placing our first stitch right about here. Okay, now it's time to start stitching. I'm going to begin with this gold color. Um, and the reason I'm choosing to begin with the gold color is because the gold really forms the kind of infrastructure of this pattern. So I'm gonna start by stitching all of the gold all the way across my piece, and then I can go in and just fill in all the other colors. So the first thing we have to do is thread our needle. And I'm gonna start by using a piece of tapestry wool that's about two and a half feet long. And I really wanna stress that um, you should try to avoid the temptation to use a longer piece of tapestry wool. Beginners always seem to wanna to use a really long piece thinking it's gonna save them trouble if they don't have to keep re-threading their needle. But the problem is long pieces tend to tangle really easily and it's just gonna cause you headaches. So please start with a short piece of tapestry wool. Then we're gonna thread it into our needle and I'm just gonna give you one little tip because it can be tricky to thread yarn through a needle. So here's a little kind of DIY tip for a needle threader that you can make. This is just a plain piece of printer paper. It's about two inches long and it's narrow enough that it can fit through the eye of my needle. Fold this in half and I'll place the yarn through the fold just like that. And then I'm gonna thread these two cut ends of the paper together through the needle and then pull the whole thing through and the yarn will come right through with it. That just makes it a little easier to thread the needle. Then we're gonna pull the yarn through until both strands are almost the same length, but not quite. We'll pull them through until one end is about six inches longer than the other end. And now we're ready to begin stitching and we are not gonna be tying any knots. There's no knots in Bargello at all, so we don't need to knot the ends of these um, pieces of yarn. All right, here we go. It's finally time to do the Bargello stitch. So we've got our plastic canvas, and remember we already talked about counting over and up to find the starting point that corresponds with this first stitch on the far left of the pattern. So I'm gonna begin by inserting my needle through the back of the plastic canvas and pulling it through until there's a tail on the back about one inch long, and, or uh, two inches long, and I'll just leave that on the back. Just gonna kinda hold it in place and um, keep my hand on it until it's secured, and I'm gonna show you how to secure it in a minute. Now, Bargello stitches are super easy because every stitch is just a vertical up and down stitch that's the same exact length, and for the purposes of this pattern, Every stitch is five squares long. So I'll tell you what that means. The, thread, the yarn is currently coming up in square one. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. And it's in square one, and then we're gonna count that as square one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna go back down in in square five. And pull it through until it's just snug. Now this tail on the back, I'm gonna hold it in place behind my work and I'm gonna stitch over it for the next inch or so. Now looking back at my chart, I can see that that's my first stitch, five squares long. And if you forget how many squares it is, you can just count on your chart to double check, five squares. Now the next stitch next to it is exactly the same length. So I'm gonna go back up to the top, same exact place that my first stitch started, but right next to it in the next column over. and back down in the same spot. So that's two stitches made. Next, I'm gonna look back at my chart and I see that now I have to step down to make my next set of stitches. So every time you need to step down, you step down by two squares. So what that means is you can go back to where your first stitch started. And sometimes I just go ahead and put my needle right in the canvas to help myself count. That was square one, I'm gonna skip one, I'm gonna skip two, I'm gonna go into the next one. That's my new square one. See, I'm getting a little bit of knot in the back, so that's what I was talking about, gotta be careful.
And again, I'm gonna make this stitch five squares long. So I'm in square one. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and back down in square five. Look back at my chart. I see that I need to do two stitches that are the exact same size and placement. So I'm just gonna make another one right next to it. Okay, now looking back at my chart, I can see that I'm gonna continue making sets of two stitches and each one is gonna jump down by two squares. So let's just look at that one more time. Here's what would have been my square one. I'm gonna skip one, skip two, and start in the next one. So that's my new square one. And now I need to make this stitch five stitches long. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now let's review all of that in more detail. This is square one, and that's square two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna insert my needle into square five. Now I'll go back up to where I started that first stitch and make another stitch just like it, one column over. And meanwhile, I'm stitching over the tail in the back. Now I'm gonna step down by two squares. I'm skipping one, two, and I'll be going into that third square. So that third square is now the new square one. So I'm coming up in what is now square one, and then that's square two, three, four, and five, and I'll go down in square five. And again, I'll make a second stitch right next to this one that's the exact same size and placement. And now again, I'm gonna skip two more empty squares to make my next stitches. Skip one and two, and I'll go in on that third one right there. So this is my new square one. And I'm gonna skip, that's one, two, three, four, five, and go in on square five. And again, I'll make another stitch the same right next to it. Still stitching over my tail as I go. Now I'll just continue making stitches until I get to the point where it's time to turn and work in a different direction. So let's just talk a little bit about the path that we're gonna stitch on this pattern. So as you can see, the yellow does this kind of crisscross thing across, and you can basically choose to go all the way down to the lowest point and then back up and go all the way across and then go in and fill in the other direction, or you can just do the top and then go back in and do the bottom. So I'm gonna do the latter. So I'm just gonna do this top section. So when I get down to this kind of point here in the center is when I'll turn and work back up. So just to figure out when to do that, I'm gonna go back and count my stitches. I did one, two, three, four, five, six sets before it's time to turn. And here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just gonna complete this sixth set and then I'm gonna turn and work up in the other direction. And to do that, I just simply keep stitching, but I step up going upwards instead of downwards and it immediately becomes a little bit easier because now I can match up my stitches with the symmetrical, their symmetrical partner on the other side. So I already can kind of go a little more quickly and count a little bit less. And you'll see that as you keep going, as your pattern starts to emerge, it becomes a little easier to kind of predict exactly where your stitches need to go and you don't need to count quite so much as you did in the very beginning. Now I'm just gonna keep going. Now I've just got to the point where my yarn is kind of reaching the um, canvas. The yarn tail is the same length as my working yarn. So I'm just gonna slide my needle so that there's a little more space in between my yarn tail and my working yarn. And I'm gonna keep going. The next thing I wanna talk about is what to do when you run out of yarn and you need to start a new piece. You don't wanna stitch until you have absolutely almost no space left um, 
between your needle and the yarn because it just becomes really hard to work. You wanna stop when you still have a few inches left. So about this much or maybe a little bit less, but I'm gonna show you how to end off an old piece of yarn and start a new piece of yarn without tying any knots. And it's super easy to do. You'll just flip your work over and on the back, you'll run your needle under all of your stitches that you just finished. And I usually go under about the length of my needle and then just pull it through until it's snug and then just snip the yarn flush with the surface of the work and that's it your tail is fastened off it's safe it's not going to unravel and that's sort of the equivalent of tying a knot but with no knots because knots would make like bumps on the back of your work and this is just nice and smooth now to start a new piece of yarn and keep working i've threaded my needle with a fresh piece of yarn and again this is the back of my work and i'm just going to run my needle under the back of my work coming from the opposite direction so that my needle emerges right at the point where I need to start stitching again. So my needle is now emerging right where I left off before. And I'm just gonna pull that yarn until the tail just sneaks underneath the last stitch. And now I can flip my work over and just keep stitching. And sometimes I try to be careful be like gentle on my very first stitch so that I don't accidentally pull the yarn out but once you make another couple of stitches the yarn is very secure and you can just keep going okay so look I have finished all my yellow stitches I've done all three complete diamonds and the two end diamonds on the end and now comes the really fun part because we get to fill in all the colors and this part is really easy it goes fast it's really satisfying so this is when I think it gets really fun so at this point you can choose to start filling in colors in any order that you like you can start to do um, all the centers or all the tops and bottoms it really doesn't matter what order you work in because all it all eventually gets filled in so we're gonna go over here to the color key and that's how you can tell which color to use for which section. So I'm gonna start with this, um, the next color in on the interior of the diamond. So I'm gonna start with that orangey color and I've already got it threaded onto my needle and I just wanna show you how to add on a new color. So I wanna begin stitching right here. So I'm gonna turn over my work and adding a new color is just the same as adding a new piece um, when we added a new piece of yellow. I'm just gonna run my needle underneath several stitches so that the tip comes out at the, po at the point where I wanna start stitching. And it doesn't matter if it's going underneath a different color than what you're working with, it won't show on the front. So I'm good to go, just gonna flip it over and just start stitching. Now the one important thing that you need to know whenever you start adding um, new colors or new rows is that your stitches always will share a square with their vertical neighbors. So what I mean by that is I'm going into this next stitch and it's going to go into the same square that that yellow stitch ended on. So they're going to share a square. If they didn't share a square, we would see a little white bar in between the stitches from the plastic canvas, and we don't want that. We want everything to look fully filled in. So again, the stitch will either begin or end in the same square as its neighbor. And that's because the goal of Bargello is to have every single piece of the canvas totally filled in so that it just looks like a solid piece of stitchery. And so now at this point, I would just continue working all the way around this diamond. So I'll just go up and then down and then all the way back. And when I get back here, I'll just hide my needle underneath the neighboring stitches, cut the yarn, and then go back and work this section and this section. And then I would do the same to fill in all the tops and bottoms. Okay, and once you've filled in your whole piece, it's gonna look beautiful like this. You know, it doesn't take very long at all to do this piece. You could easily make it in a weekend if you worked on it pretty steadily or if you just pick it up here and there, it still might only take a week or two. It's really a pretty quick project. Um, once you have filled in all of the pattern, the next step is to trim the plastic canvas so it's the correct size for finishing. Because remember, we had a lot of border of plastic canvas around it. So to trim it for finishing, it's really easy. We're just gonna cut it with regular scissors. It cuts very easily, and we wanna cut it so that there's exactly one 
empty square along the top and the bottom. So you've got the square that the stitches are going into and then exactly one empty square. You just wanna be careful to trim it right along the um, edge of that kind of line of the canvas so that you don't have sort of whiskers sticking up um, of the plastic canvas. So one empty square on the top and on the bottom and two empty squares on each side. So there's two empty squares on that side and two empty squares on this side. And now all that's left to do is turn it into a cuff. So to do that, we're just gonna wrap it around and we're gonna overlap those two empty stitches on both sides so that two columns are fully overlapped. And then I'm going to take um, a threaded needle and I'm just gonna start right here on this square that's e even with the last um, row of stitching. I'm actually gonna come up in the same square that my last column of stitches is in and back down on the other side. And then I'm just gonna keep repeating that all the way down. But the important thing is to make sure I'm working into the same column of the grid as my last row of stitches. And that way everything will be fully hidden and there won't be any plastic canvas showing through. Now this can feel a little wonky until you work about an inch and then it starts to kind of feel more sturdy like things are starting to actually be held in place. So just hold it with your fingers to keep it steady. And we're just gonna work all the way down. And once the side is fully seamed, the last step is to finish the top and bottom of the cuff. And to do that, I'm simply taking one stitch up and over the edge and coming up through the same square as my last row of stitches so that again, they're gonna share a square. And that's just making a nice little edging stitch to hide the plastic canvas along the top and bottom and to make it look nice and neat. And this is how your finishing will look when the piece is complete. Don't mind that my color scheme has been switching here between my samples. This is how it'll look on the area where it was joined. And this is how the top and bottom will look. And that's it, this piece is done. You can insert your glass vase and it's ready to go. So if you'd like to make your own, you can snag a kit to make this Bargello project on our website, brooklyncraftcompany.com. The kit includes everything you've seen on this video, including the vase. And if you make this piece, we'd love to see how it turns out. So please share it on social media and tag us at Brooklyn Craft Company. Happy bar